Uh, Norm Singleton is the Vice President of Policy for Campaign for Liberty, um, a, uh, an organization that is, has grown by leaps and bounds over the past uh, four years, I guess, since it was founded, four or five years. I think that uh, in addition to a very populist, um, anti-establishment, anti-establishments of both parties' trends, there is a strong, um, much more libertarian um, streak uh, um, to in today's grassroots, in today's what is defined as conservatism today, following on the um, Ron Paul campaigns of 08 and 012. I think this year that's been reflected in um, four things. One is, uh, of course, Senator Paul's filibuster against drones, which was an issue that wasn't really on anybody's radar screen until uh, Senator Paul put it there uh, in February or March with his um, filibuster. Secondly, the reaction to NSA, the NSA uh, spying, um, I don't think you would have seen the same reaction even as early as two or three years ago it, during the Obama administration as you did, as you did today. Uh, thirdly is the recent overwhelming reaction, including by many Republicans and many grassroots against the idea of starting yet another war in Syria for uh, undetermined reasons and for an undetermined length of time. And finally, there is the uh, open warfare that seems to have broken out between the establishment and the uh, grassroots over Obamacare. And um, I think what it, what it is is that uh, that is a case where the grassroots is telling the GOP leadership and large sections of the establishment conservative leadership that you've been telling us for since Obamacare passed in 2010, so we're now about, what, three and a half years, that you're going to seriously fight to repeal Obamacare. And I, we, we know Harry Reid controls the Senate and President Obama will never sign the bill. We at least want you to fight and we'll stand with you if you fight and we will not stand with you if you continue to give us lip service. The way that activism is done uh, in this country. It, it uh, used to be that uh, you would go to a county GOP meeting and talk to your congressman, call them. Uh, you would wait for your direct mail pieces to tell you what was the big issues and either call or send a letter. It was very time consuming. It was very expensive. Today, um, my group, uh, Campaign for Liberty, my employer, we can do emails and get to people directly and then have the effects felt more immediately. And there's a lot of self-starting going on today. You see candidates um, fundraising, uh, having events. You see protests and, and other forms of activism being planned on Facebook, um, totally under the radar screen. And then we, we hit them hard, we hit them fast. And because it was all done very quickly through social media, through uh, the internet, um, they don't know what's, the, the, the other side, the establishment, can be really caught flat-footed. I think that's what happened with Syria, with the Obamacare, the funding effort. That's obviously a lot, big part of Senator Paul's success with the filibuster was that it got out on Twitter, on Facebook, and on the rest of the social media, whereas even 10 years ago, even five years ago, um, that would, you people would have had to wait till it circled, cycled through the news cycles to find out about it. Now everybody knew about it as it was happening and was calling and sending, calling their senators um, as Rand was on the floor saying, uh, I don't see you down there standing with Rand. Get your behind down there now. Uh, so that, that's how I think it has really changed things. If I was still advising a, an elected official um, along the philosophy of my current, of my former, um, boss, Congressman Ron Paul, I would say that a winning strategy for uh, a limited government libertarian Republican should incorporate libertarian populism and re some reform ideas along the lines of Senator Lee's tax plan that does recognize that our tax and monetary policies are a burden on working and lower class Americans and that a good, solid, libertarian, limited government tax plan should be concerned about more than just the capital gains um, 
rate and should recognize that the payroll tax is a federal tax imposed on people that burdens American citizens just as much as the income tax does. And it just drives me crazy when Republicans say, well, poor people don't pay taxes. Um, they pay payroll and they pay sales taxes. And I think we, we as a movement and Republicans as a party really, really drop the ball when they, when they, when they say things like that. Just like when you hear some Republicans and even some conservatives pretend that the health care system was a free market utopia until March of 2010. <laughs> um, secondly, I think that Brittany made a really good point. Um, I think Jack <coughs> Kemp uh, used to say that people don't care if you know until they know if you care. And that means that we have to as a movement, as a party, we have to step out of our comfort zone and talk to people who aren't our base, who didn't vote for us, who maybe look at us with suspicion, and maybe sometimes there's good reason for them to look at us with suspicion, because that's how we, we grow. And I'm, I'm reminded of, uh, in 1996, I was campaigning for uh, Ron Paul in the congressional race uh, in a town in his, in his district called Victoria, Texas. And um, we were doing um, standard campaign stuff, sign waving and uh, literature dropping. And the gentleman I was with said, we should go and spend a couple hours in the Hispanic part of town. We were the only ones there. The, the only signs you saw in that part of town were Ron Paul signs because we went there. The Democrats took them for granted and the Republicans, every other Republican campaign had written them off. Um, I think if you look at the, at the demographics, Ron, Ron actually did better with Hispanics than most Texas Republicans, and, it was, and a lot of it was, I'm convinced, it wasn't so much that they agreed with him that we happened to find a uh, little conclave of hardcore libertarians uh, in <laughs> Texas. It was because we actually took the time to go up and say, I'm for the Ron Paul campaign. I'd like to give you some literature to explain to you what Ron is all about, and why, why I would like you to consider supporting him on election day, when no, no other candidate had bothered to take the time to do that. Yeah, the Ron, Ron Paul brought in a, a bunch of young people, people young people, um, much more ethnically and philosophically diverse than, than the typical Republican candidate. Amen. Uh, we had 13,000 of them for, for a day-long rally in Tampa last, last year, the, the Sunday before the convention started. It was a wonderful thing, and it was all mostly very positive speeches, a very positive message. We came out there, we went to the convention, and we got kicked in the teeth, the door slammed in our face, and we were told, we don't want you to participate in this party. We want your votes, but we don't want you to take leadership roles. We don't like you because you're, because you're new. We're going to kick yeah. you out of the party, yeah. and that's wrong. But that's the, that's the history, and then you talk about that with... Republicans, instead of doing op-ed on what's wrong with Obamacare, and instead of talking to people like Lori and people at Cato and Heritage about what's some good ideas that we can put up with health care to replace Obama with, because the second R, remember, was replace, uh, they're, um, they're doing op-ed research on Ted Cruz. And I, I laugh because it just occurred to me how absolutely ridiculous it is for them to spend donor money that they probably got from conservative donors to do op-ed research on a conservative senator. A good, a good thing about outrage and anger is that it does, it does motivate people, and it should. When you explain to people how the government, what the government is doing, what Obamacare is, what uh, <coughs> on the farm bill, how you have um, members of Congress who are receiving governments, who are receiving the taxes of working people um, to, for, as part of programs that drive up your food prices, you should be outraged. You should be mad. And um, part of that is um, you, you talk about selling, or, or selling outrage. I don't think we're selling outrage. I think we're trying to give people a vehicle to express their outrage. And I think that part of broadening the base of the movement is broadening the outrage to people who have um, been sold a bill of goods that they have no other alternative except to rely on big daddy welfare state government and that, that no, that is actually destroying your lives and we have a better idea for you and we are selling something called freedom and they're selling something called statism 
we have a much better product, and part of what we need to do is believe in it, uh, is, is actually have the courage of our convictions. And some people in the Republican Party need to have convictions that this is the same leadership team that's been whining for a month about how Ted Cruz is attacking um, other Republicans, and he's, be, he's, be, he's the one being destructive. We're the ones who, who are a problem. You hear this, the liberty movement is the problem. We went down to Tampa last month, last year. I was part of the Ron Paul 2012 um, convention team, and we were going to, we told, Dr. Paul told all his delegates, be firm but be respectful. Do not embarrass um, Mitt, Mitt Romney. Uh, we're, we're there to make our presence felt, but to let them know that they don't have to fear us. And what happened? A gentleman named Ben, ben Ginsburg engineered a kick of the teeth and a rules committee and a rules change that stripped power away from the grassroots, made that part of the establishment. Now, how am I supposed to go to liberty activists right. and say, the Republican Party is welcoming you with open arms? How, 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 how are we in good conscience um, supposed to tell our people to um, hold your nose and vote for Mitt Romney when he's kicking us in the teeth. You, you no, we're not on the same team. And if you look at the Ron Paul 2012 campaigns and the rallies, th those were people who were excited. They were outraged what's going on, but they also were very positive, very hopeful. And there is a positive message that, that Ron um, always made the focus and that those of us who work with him still always try to keep the focus, which is that Liberty brings people together. It is we, it's a unifying ideal, not a, not, a dividing, not a divisive ideal, and that the idea that you're better off, it's for your own good that you want freedom, not just for an, not just for an abstraction, and that freedom is for everybody. And, I, and, and, I, and to the extent, if we, if we don't do a good enough job of selling the positive yeah. message, that, that doesn't mean that it's not there. It just means that we need to continue to improve how we um, market and, ref and refrain and present our ideas. Right. The most popular candidate, Republican candidate of the 2012 cycle was a 76-year-old um, white, white Christian Texan <laughs> whose biggest vice <laughs> is chocolate chip cookies. Um, the reason that he was pop was because he, his message was what his message was, and he didn't, I can tell you, uh, having worked as his aide for many years, that he doesn't change his message for an audience. But, but, but and that's something but, but, that people but, but, did but, but, do, do respond to, is authenticity. I think that we, we, can't, we can't get so slick and so concerned about messaging that we forget to give our message and not try to be too clever by half. And sometimes, too, I think that, that, that Republicans' attempts to connect with the, with, with the younger demographic, it, it can be inauthentic and it can be a little bit embarrassing like that uncle mm -hmm. who tries to be cool by telling you that, I just heard that new Mumford and Nephew song on the radio yesterday. I would say that I actually agree with a lot of what's been said by the, the ladies on the panel. Um, I think that uh, as, my, as uh, many of the things that I learned from Ron Paul and working in, with him and watching the growth of, of the liberty movement through his, uh, through his efforts was that liberty does bring people together. The message of liberty, I've seen it, 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 it attracts people from various backgrounds, from various uh, religious and ethni ethnicities. You, you, we, you need to have the courage, though, to actually believe that liberty works, to believe in, in freedom, to believe in the, those core values. Um, you, need, you do need to figure out how do you sell it. Um, I think that, no offense, Brittany, but the end the Fed message actually is powerful because there is a sense in this country that things are, things are wrong, and that institutions like the Federal Reserve are the are the, epi the epiphany or of crony capitalism, and that's something that, that 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 is a message that actually does bring people together. The cronyism, the corporatism, um, it's a problem for the Republican Party because there are too many in the in the establishment of the Republican Party, and I know that to talk about the Republican establishment is an instant mind closer to a lot to unfortunately a lot of people in this town, but. That, but who are still, w are still welded to 
to the to programs like the farm programs like XM like the like the Fed itself, um, but that is that is one thing that we can do to to attract people. I think you, you we need to be principled, uh, unwieldy on our principles, but flexible in strategy, flexible in how we sell our principles. We need to go to communities where we haven't always gone, and we need to talk to them about our ideas and tell them directly. These, are ide these ideas will work better for you because you're getting a raw deal from the other side, and part of it is our fault because we haven't come to you in the past, but we're coming to you now. The way Senator Rand Paul went to um, Howard University and was the first Republican to show up there, uh, may maybe since Frederick Douglass, I don't know, but it's, it's been a <laughs> long time. Um, and I think that we also do need to be, to be willing to not eat our own in public, but we also need to be willing to stand up to the GOP establishment, because that's part of establishing street cred, is to say that we're not just willing to fight Barack Obama, but we're all, and Harry Reid, but we're all, and Nancy Pelosi, but we're also willing to fight John Boehner and Eric Cantor and um, uh, Lindsey Graham and John McCain when they when when they don't adhere to our principles. So it is about principle over party, because that's I th I think that's very important to attracting mil millennials.